Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. Hey. Oh, shit. What do we think Kate's in there? She isn't. This isn't Kate's memory. It's mine. How? How the fuck is it yours? Professor Brink, you okay? What the fuck did you just do? Where's Sam? I want to see him right now. What's going on? He's a fucking liar. Tell me everything. What the hell is going on, Jordan? It's all right, buddy. It's all right. I'll tell you everything. Just take it easy. You are so full of shit. Breathe. Deep breath. I need a response team in here now. Jordan, what do I always say, huh? Being a hero, it's not about the glory. It's about... It's about sacrifice. I know, sir, but what the hell kind of sacrifice was that? Well, Luke, Luke needs cutting-edge treatments. Put him over the edge. That boy could be Homelander strong, but sometimes, sometimes he has a bad reaction. If Luke's getting cutting edge treatments, I want him to. Always looking out for yourself, huh? (laughs) Kid, you got a strong head. You don't need him. Tell me, do you remember sitting in that chair, a scared shitless freshman who never wanted to switch, and I promised that I would always take good care of you? Remember? Jordan, people just don't understand the lows it takes to reach great heights. So now I want you to promise me, as my new TA, that you will always protect me. Not a word of this to anyone. You're making me your TA? That's how you became Brinks and Gage. Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Robert. And this is Panels to Pixels podcast. This episode, we're doing a spoiler-full podcast about Gen V Season 1, Episodes 5 and 6. Now, mind you, other panelers that are out there that have been listening to us, I'm sorry we there was a little bit of a break that we had for a while. Uh, I had stuff going on. I took a little bit of vacation. Like I, I always say, a podcaster's retreat with my friends. But of course, I went back to work and there was a lot of work. Rob himself had some things going on in his life as far as work is concerned, too. So uh, we're back finally. But we will be back, too, later on next week to give you episodes seven and eight. But in this case, we're going to be doing Gen V season one, episode five and six. And the season one, episode five. It's entitled Welcome to the Monster Club, but the synopsis is Reward. Last night, the incredible Steve attended an off-campus party where his penis was lost. He just (laughs) wants it back. So his family is offering a $10,000 reward for its safe return. No no questions asked. Please contact the Godolting (laughs) Daily Classifieds office or the lost and found desk at the Godolton Student Union. Interesting. Okay. Where are you getting this synopsis? Because I mean, that is actually right from Amazon Prime on the actual synopsis. Is it really? That (laughs) is. So I thought it was hilarious when I I was like typing it out and reading it. I'm like, are you serious? (laughs) (laughs) They're making it as like panels or bulletin boards for the kids that are at the university, which is interesting. So I, I like that. But Cool things too, listeners. If you actually go into Prime and you have like an Apple TV like I do, if you go into Prime and you go down and you see where the actors are and they give you the about of them, there's trivia for every episode. Yeah. So they give you really cool trivia, like information about the show. So if 
you have trivia night with your friends one night and they, they bring up some cool stuff like this for these particular shows. Guess what? You got the answers right there. <laughs> right. I will say this. Uh, I think that's actually a cool option that Amazon does is like when you pause mm-hmm. and you get the actors that are in it or, you know, I wish Netflix did something like that, but they don't. Um, yeah. I think Disney plus might do something like that. No, they no, don't. Not do Disney any plus. Um, yeah. Apple TV does. Apple TV does, yeah. Yeah, Apple TV does something like that. Mm -hmm. But it is cool the fact that I could pause it and get information of the episode or the actors and things like that, which I think it's actually cool. Yeah, because they have that cool thing. But there's always that because it's Amazon. There's a link for you to go to a website to buy stuff on Amazon. Of based course. On it. <laughs> think, of, think of who they are. It's Amazon. <laughs> now, if Disney had done that, they could easily link something to their Disney store to be oh, ordered to go directly to your home. <laughs> it's just Disney's a monster when it comes to that. I mean, <laughs> they do. And you know what? They do that enough when you go to the park. Everywhere in the park you go to, like as soon as you finish doing one of the rides, Mm-hmm. And you go off the exit. What do they land you? They land you right into their store. And you're like, oh, of course. Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> hey, we got swords. We got muskets. We got hats. We got and everything they, that you could possibly and want. And they do it because <laughs> if those ki- if the ki- if your kids enjoyed that ride, next thing you know, you're in the store. Now the kids are like, oh, look, I want one of those or whatever. And you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> Daddy, I just took this. What? <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, it's. I find that always uh, amusing. Every time I go to Disney and it leads me out to, like, the store, I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, in this case, we're talking about Monster Club, which is episode five of Gen V, season one. So uh, overall thoughts. What were your thoughts of this episode, Rob? Uh, of the episode, I thought it was interesting. You know, again, this show got better and better as it went along. Yeah. And I thought that this one, just the revelations on what you find out mm-hmm. is pretty cool. So we find out, on uh, you know, um, what's making Kate, you know, and spoilers ahead, of course, uh, yeah. you know, why she, you know, that she's been manipulating people all this time and how the other uh, friends find out about it and things like that. So you get to find out a lot of things, you know, it's like a lot of dark secrets start to come out um, in this one. And actually the next episode too, but this one is really the one that, you know, you explore that. Yeah. Yeah. I actually listed this episode under my, my thoughts overall in my notes as the mystery episode where everybody figures things out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, and I actually liked it for the fact that it was a bit shaded in mystery. I wanted to know more within the aftermath of that party. How crazy did it get? Because we've already had that weird sex orgy episode from the boys itself from last season. That, <laughs> right. that was wild. And I'm like, what could these kids do that are so completely weird and strange? Well, obviously, we do get to see the aftermath. And we do get to see Maverick, who's the son of, um, uh, what was it, Luminescent? Or I forget his name. Yeah, I'm not sure. He's the, he's the invisible guy. Right. <laughs> but uh, And he's there with his llama Sloan being pulled <laughs> b- with a, a ball gag in his mouth with the cap and the glasses on. That, he's that, still whole, invisible. Thing is, that whole thing is just weird, man. <laughs> we, we find Jordan and Marie in bed. So they had a little bit of a tryst. A uh, little cricket in the pool as a giant because Marie winds up going outside and, Mar- and she sees Emma in the pool covered with a tarp. Huge girl, giant she cricket. Lo- yeah, she looked like she was just sitting in a bathtub. Yeah. That's how big she was in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> so. And then, of course, we get all the social media that was posted with her being huge, too, chugging kegs as a big person. Right. And her boobs are blurred out and everything else. Uh, and But the one result of this particular uh, episode in the very beginning is that people are missing dazed of memories they they can't yeah. remember everything 
we also find out that there is a virus that they're trying to come up with. Within this particular uh, episode? Yeah, it's in this particular episode. Um, Cardosa meets with uh, Shetty to discuss his creation of a virus meant to control powers and his desire to use it on Marie. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting that this is where they where they discuss it. And then on the next episode, we see the outcome of that. Yeah, we see more of that involvement right. and where it goes from there. That's more of the heavier part of uh, next episode, which right. we'll be discussing. But yeah, and I, I just love the fact that when everybody wakes up, because Sam shows up at the house and nobody knows who he is. Even Emma doesn't even know who he is. Right. And they're saying, you're just some kid and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, well, what about the drive-in? What about this? And you know me. And it comes to a point where they're trying to figure out who wiped their minds or who changed it. They always go to the one student who has that pretty much power. Right. Even though they have one in front of them, Kate. But they go right to Rufus, Mr. Penis Explosion from, <laughs> <laughs> what, an episode or two ago? Yeah. I so, think it was, uh, was it last episode? <laughs> I think so. Episode four. But, you know, Marie had blown up his penis, but uh, they go after him. So they all make way to get to Rufus. But, you know, it's it's so funny how it's like they, they just go gravitate towards the another student now this is where date rape and all that stuff comes into play in the commentary of the show right and they're thinking okay you you just took away part of my rights it's like kind of like being roofied at at certain points and uh this also goes into play with when kate comes out at that point too within in the episode because uh but what i liked about the episode is the build-up of where they chase down Rufus throughout the whole thing. And they, it's like Andre goes after him because of something that Kate had stated that she woke up once and there he was. And he, he basically mind wiped her, but her, you know, and Marie and Emma states is like, your body remembers your mind won't remember, but your body does. Right. So, and it, that's where the whole raping aspect of this comes into play. But it throws Andre on a hell bent journey just to go after Rufus and try to kill him. But um, Marie and uh, I think Emma at that point, or no, it was Marie and Jordan that wind up going to find Rufus. And then right. Andre shows up and th throws him through a wall with some metal door or something, mind you. And uh, there's somebody else there. But oh, wow. Yeah, no, that was actually intense. And then that is where we got the revelation that Kate is the one that's been manipulating everybody, uh, especially with the mind wipes and everything. And yeah, that's where that's where everything I think to me, I think this is the part of this entire show where everything starts to kind of fall into a little bit fall into place, but also yeah. kind of like fall apart in t in in terms of the their friendships and what's going on and manipulation uh, that's manipulation, going on all these things that are now finally coming into you know to light this is like the point where once she says hey it's me who did it mm -hmm. and let's not forget also the uh the tracking that the uh, all these kids have under their collarbone Correct. You know, that's another Murray thing. Murray finds it and is able to extract it. Now, mind right. you, key point, and it's a little bit of a note, the trackers were actually used by Vought for their soups, and it's something that we had seen in the boys. So that's part of the trivia that I mentioned earlier. So right. they actually mentioned that. So if you are in your uh, Apple TV and you're using Amazon Prime, you could actually go look at that and it gives you all the information. It's pretty mm -hmm. cool. But yeah, no, I uh, I found that part that were that when Kate said that, and you know, even after you find out about the tracking and stuff like that, how Kate made her forget about yes. the tracking, 
uh, or the tracking device and things like that. And that's where everything started to fall into place for them going, wait a minute, what's going on here? Um, but it's just that part, Kate revealing to her, to the whole group, A, I'm the one that's been mind wiping everybody. Mm -hmm. That's when things really change from that point on. Yeah. And then in between that, we've had the issue too. Like after Andre beat the crap out of Rufus, Rufus winds up, I guess, at a point where he's able to do something to Andre. And Andre just shows up in the cafeteria and realized <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, crap. Right. Damn it. It happened to me. I didn't yeah. know. It's like, how did I get here? But within that whole mess and that these confrontations, we do get something more about Sam. They track him down. They find him at the drive in. And guess what happens? Where he was hiding. It's like this whole Muppet battle. There's a whole Muppet massacre. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> and I think they did that due to budgetary and they didn't want to get too much gruesome with this. How the fuck? I mean, think about it. We do I mean, get this, to see the aftermath, but this show has had no problems. Look, we saw in the an book, oversized penis. We saw it, a penis blow up. But not only that, <laughs> think about the boys in the boys when um what is the uh character uh um, when a train rips through the girl in the very first season in the first episode and blows right through her and dewey's standing there with his girlfriend's hand and there's a blood splattered <laughs> <laughs> no, is it victoria newman yeah well she blows so, up heads right she blows up a whole bunch of heads and when we see that in the boys where it's like just head after head being <laughs> blown up him battling all these uh soldiers or whatever a security guards coming in mm -hmm. and just ripping them apart i don't see that being as like oh you know to me that would be like oh okay it's just you know it's just the way the show is <laughs> what made it interesting was the fact that he saw it as muppets mm -hmm. and that the muppet true. and the muppet part because i think it was a you know, i think it was a good choice by the uh, the makers and the writers to do that because we've already seen them tear apart a whole bunch of people and, you know, and make it gory and stuff like that. But when you do it with Muppets, it just looks funny. Yes. But you know what's going on behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. So the glitter so you, is not really glitter. It's great. Right. <laughs> yeah. So when you see the glitter just like blow up and it's just all red glitter everywhere, you're like, oh, my God. If like he's seen that. But the actual scene is there is just blood splatter everywhere. Yeah. And so like a, he I remember like uh, when he took the uh, he ripped off an arm and then shoved it in some in one of the his mouth. Guards mouth. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and then the other one was like he grabbed his head and he just popped his brain out or something. But and it's then being... it squeezed it out too, and it yeah, was and, it's be... <laughs> and it was being done in a Muppet way, which is funny to me. And I said, well, maybe, yeah, one, maybe it's because the budget for that would be huge compared to doing it. Oh with yeah, Muppet. the practical effects alone would have been. It's just crazy. fucking that would be huge, but it, it's a it's a. Also, a great way of being creative with this show, which I have to commend them for, because yeah. this kid is so messed up in the head. Like when he was having sex with um, uh, Emma, Emma, and he saw her. Oh, as, that's the next episode. Though. That's the next episode. But he saw her as a Muppet. A Muppet. <laughs> and then it was like the whole Titanic scene because on the popcorn machine glass, her hand goes and it's like misty right. and it goes down. <laughs> so, you know, so him, this is his world on how he's dealing with things. Because he still has a childlike mind, if you think about Correct. it, because he's been abducted by these people, utilized in their sight. They, we find out, spoilers, obviously, siphoning his powers and was, we're giving them to Luke who had yeah. killed himself, which was golden boy. So, and, but the thing is, I, I think of it as somebody who has extreme physical power. He is just as strong. Cause we've seen this from Jordan as well. Jordan, uh, it depends on what visage Jordan takes, what gender, because Jordan could either be really super strong or super blocking. 
Right. And, and I think as a girl, she is super strong. And it's the opposite for her as a male or them as a male when they're Jordan as a male and they're blocking. Because we do get to see that later on uh, during the battle. Yeah. You know what? I haven't really analyzed and I should, um, but I haven't really analyzed the powers. What, what powers they have when they switch. Yeah. You know, here. That's, I, that's, I didn't really go that into it. I, yeah, I, I'm going to have to look into that because I don't know if it's the same or if it's uh, just, hey, when I'm in this state or, you know, whatever, I have this power. When I'm in this state, I have this power. Yeah. And I'm wondering if it's a part of their powers or if it's a choice. Hmm. It's a good, good question. In and other if, words, like it doesn't matter if, you know, which which gender uh, he transitions to. Mm-hmm. He'll always have those powers, but because he transitions into one gender, he identifies more with this power because that's part of that identity of that gender compared to the other one. Mm. It's a good so, question. Yeah, that's uh, that's something to look into. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then obviously uh, they wind up getting all that information out of Kate. Uh, we find out towards the end, and then that's where we're left off at the end. And uh, I guess they go to Shetty's. Yes. And that's where we're at. But uh, to wrap up what we're at within this particular episode, I have just one quote. And that's from Dusty, who at the very beginning of the episode, he looked like a young kid. And they were ready to beat the crap out of him because he was holding the party. But he doesn't. he's not really a kid. He's really 28 years old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, I still have a dick like a hairless caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> oh but it's yeah. funny because i i think i was talking to you it's not a this is not a show that has like memorable quotes it just has fantastic Odd. dialogue <laughs> yeah that, that, and that. some really quick little things but not something not quotes that you would say to somebody you know <laughs> it's like oh yeah this is you know i say this quote because it's famous um it's not something to say at work or nearby the water cooler. No, as a matter of <laughs> fact, uh, at work, I'm actually known as a person. We have this uh, whiteboard and at work, I'm known for the person who puts up movie quotes every day up there. Right. Oh, no, and, no, what about yeah, Zach? <laughs> uh, Zach won't do that. Ah. Uh, but if I was to put any quotes from uh, Gen V up there, I'll get fired. <laughs> 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 uh, there's a good chance that they're like rob we 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 gotta we talk. Have to have a little talk with you and how you need to be compassionate <laughs> towards others and yourself <laughs> yeah and, and don't don't get me wrong i think the group of people i work with will have a really good sense of humor about it yeah it's just that Probably still not the thing to put up there, but exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not the days of Valley McBeal with these kind of shows that we watch today, <laughs> right? <laughs> I was never a big Al- Ally McBeal fan. I watched it on occasion, but it was not Did my you? big cup uh, of tea. It wasn't my thing. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, this is where we move on to the next episode, which would be Gen V season one, episode six, entitled Jumanji. 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 Uh, and the funny thing is about this, because we know about Jumanji, because we've heard that word before in the show. Right. When Rufus had to hit himself in the nuts with a baseball bat so many times, screaming out Jumanji from Kate. <laughs> so, so the synopsis for this particular episode is the Godolkin University School of Crime Fighting is excited to announce the newest course offering the psychology of supervillains. By studying the most well-known example of supervillain, Soldier Boy, the course will investigate superhero go bad from their flawed origin story to the vices and moral compromises that lead them astray. Spaces are limited. Sign up today. (laughs) Like I said, they put these synopsises up as like a billboard, which is pretty cool, but an interesting but I, I just like when I read them and I go, I start laughing because I, I got <laughs> to the point where 
before I put on the episode, I have to read a synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was a this was a cool episode. Again, this one really dives into ev- because since now everybody is so in the last episode, I think what we got more towards the end was that somehow everybody got trapped in um hates, hates mind mind and in this episode we find they find out that yeah they're trapped in kate's mind but you start yeah. to see everybody else starts to see what they have gone through yes when it came to either their powers getting revealed or their or, hidden secrets or regrets or hidden secrets and regrets yeah and it was interesting that everybody was guilty of something mm-hmm you know, and I really enjoyed the fact that they, it, instead of them doing flashbacks or them talking about, you know, how they find out, they the show. fact that they did this in one episode and they show it, and mm-hmm. now everybody knows it, was also very clever, I think. Yeah. And we do get to see Luke again within this particular episode. Right. We get to see uh, more of the relationships within people between like Andre and Kate, uh, Marie's openness about what happened to her and her parents and her, her sister. We could see more about Kate herself and how she found out about her powers. Uh, we get soldier boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> we get soldier boy. Oh boy. And yeah. then on top of that, we, we get a little bit more here and there about people. So, uh, my, my thoughts about this episode, I thought it was just so trippy. Yeah. Because we're literally within somebody's brain, kind of like how professor X would go into somebody's brain. Kind of like, if you think about it with, uh, what was it? Uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness when he was like in his own brain and then Wanda comes in and kills him. Yeah, yeah. Uh Yeah, you know, something like that. And uh, almost or if you remember the TV show Legion. Uh, you know what? I never got to see that. And people oh, say that it's a great it. show. It is a great I have show. yet to see that show. How what, It was what, five seasons or something? Three. Three seasons? Okay. Yeah, and it was really it was done very well. My friend Jason Cabassi did it on his uh, network on Podcastica, so you could check that out. But they, uh, I, I, I equate it to that because Legion literally, just to give you a little example of it, it's Professor X's son stuck in kind of like a sanitarium, right? And then it's all him dealing with everybody in and around the whole complex who have either powers or him dealing within his own mind and that show is extremely trippy mm. itself i so, know that uh i know that in the comic books legion yeah it's uh professor xavier's son but probably one of mo- the one of the most powerful mutants in all of the marvel universe because yes. of the type of powers that he has yeah he's like and, a nexus level style yeah. mutant yeah correct but yeah, it just gave me those feels when I when I watched this episode. But, but on a smaller level, actually watered <laughs> down level, right? All right. Uh, but you know, I, I I loved in this episode seeing Betsy and the uh, Betsy. Why do I have Betsy here? Is it Shetty? It's probably Shetty. Yeah, Shetty and the Doctor, and they we find out that they created this uh, virus and that affects only those that have been injected with compound V. So we get a little bit more information regarding this. Uh, basically it's Shetty's revenge on the soups that are there. People who uh, right. have compound V in their systems and the school is basically a lab to try and kill the soups. Literally it's uh, to create this virus. Uh, from what we know, it is only passable through bodily fluids like a like a cold or something like that, like germs right. uh, in this case. But she wants it airborne. And the doctor is highly against that because it could kill a majority of the mass populace that are out there. And it, the doctor is co- trying to come to some sort of conclusion with it going, hey, you, you can't do this. So yeah. there's an underlying tone from Shetty herself. But uh, we find out that later 
on. Yeah, Shetty, Shetty at this point, just, you know, at this point now, it's not just about experimenting on the soups. It's revenge. This, this is the part where you see that, oh, this is not just experimenting. You want to get rid of them and you want to do it in the most heinous way possible. Yeah. This is annihilation. Of yeah, this species. is annihilation. This is just her. Like, this is a point where that's where you see it is like, oh, she's not only have been very deceitful about her role in, you know, in the university, but yeah, there's a purpose for what she's been doing. And then once you see that, and especially when she tells them, can you make it airborne? You know, yeah. the virus. You're like, oh, this bitch is crazy. She's out for blood. She's out for blood. I mean, she really wants to get rid of everybody. And to so, see what uh, this effect has on the students that they're actually testing this out on is very heinous. And it's really disgusting, yeah. too, because you could see one of the kids come out and he's all melty, kind of gooey. Yeah, basically, he's just... Uh, he looks like a, a victim of Ebola or something like that, you know, which, yeah. I mean, he just looks horrible. And the fact that if that's going to happen to all the soups, um, this, this is her, this is more of, oh, now we, now we're going to get to find out why she's like this. And we do find out in the other episodes, but it's just, oh, this is why. And, this it was just very interesting to see her yeah. character because in the beginning you think that her character she is a defender of them and she's trying to you know uh and a teacher and somebody and a teacher, in, right. in charge of the school and we find out that all oh, behind the scenes is really no she's there just to make sure that she could find out a way to kill them all yeah so i found that very i i found her character arc actually very interesting uh from that point on yeah it's like a double agent if you think about it yeah yeah uh well within this whole uh world of kate's mind that andre marie jordan is emma there emma's not there emma's not there because emma's with um what's his name Oh, Sam. Sam. Yeah. They're having Muppet sex. Muppet sex. <laughs> but uh, we, we get to a point within this uh, that we do get to see, uh, you know, they get to face their own demons within it. So we'll get further into that. But the first thing that they do see after they see, uh, I guess, Kate's memories of when her brother goes missing because she caused that and her mother in the woods with the police and basically, they were trying to stop her from touching anybody because they knew something was going on. And she, right. she was a result of this issue as a kid. We fast forward to later on where we do see Kate when she's being talked to by Shetty. Right. And Shetty is trying to embrace her and bring her in. And then that's when we find out there's medication revolving around Kate and with Shetty itself and to suppress Kate's uh, issues and to right. tame her. It's like taming an animal while. Yeah, beast. it was the whole manipulation from the very beginning on how can how can she use and exploit what she's gone through to her advantage for her to you know achieve the goals that she's trying to achieve. Correct. And then through that, we, we get uh, the introduction of all. And this is the funniest thing that we were going to be talking about this episode. Because other than the uh, the Muppet sex uh, from Emma and Sam. <laughs> but seeing Soldier Boy. So we get Jensen Ackles back as Soldier Boy. And there's a whole reason behind it. Because uh, I guess it's Kate's imaginary friend and fantasy boyfriend. And... It, it's so funny how Soldier Boy winds up giving information about her brain to Andre, Marie, and Jordan and what's going on and the reason why it's happening and that they should be safe and get the hell out of there. Uh, but through that, we get a little bit more disturbing information from him, which 
I'm sure, Rob, you want to talk about the quote of what he how he describes. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was one of the funniest quotes because soldier there basically is trying to warn him hey you got to get out but when they were like oh it's soldier where he goes nah yeah i'm kate's imaginary friend from when she was a kid boyfriend really i thought her how to jerk off diddle that's the that skittle flick the bean gotta find that man in the canoe come <laughs> come like a faucet she crank up that jonas brothers she jump a soldier boy pillow. Uh, what is it? She'll hump a she'll soldier hump a, boy pillow. She'll hump a soldier boy pillow. <laughs> he raw dog that pillow till she was. Uh, she saw God. Yeah. That quote itself, I <laughs> burst it out laughing because I was like, "Wow, that is that's some deep shit, man." I mean. <laughs> I, just, I wonder how many outtakes that there was with Jensen Axel. Uh, I don't know. Jensen Ackles actually reciting that. I, I thought I thought the same thing. I said, "How how many times? Takes. How many takes did they take? Did they have to stop because they were laughing their asses off? And was this part of the dialogue, or did he actually improv this? That's a good question. Go I will look at the trivia. I would love to know because if that was improv. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. <laughs> Kudos to Jensen Ackles. Then. <laughs> yeah, man. I'll be like, dude, I don't know where I don't know where you come from, man. <laughs> but yep. after he warns them after that whole conversation and explaining that she's her brain is hemorrhaging, everything is breaking down, memories are going away because literally everything is in her brain and they're asleep next to her in her brain. They need to wake up. He's telling right. them they have to wake up just like with her, but they want her to wake up as well. But unfortunately, Soldier Boy disappears. He dies from her brain as a memory. Right. So it goes away and that scares the crap out of them. And that's when they go and they, they see the other memory with, like I stated before, with Kate and Shetty and the whole situation of her introducing her and bringing her into the school. And then we find out the induction of her with the woods and helping out. And then we do see uh, the, the memories of uh, both like Andre, Marie and Jordan and how they have to face their own demons. And which yeah. is either regrets, uh, uh, repressed memories or memories that they thought were OK. So. Uh, apparently that is a hidden power within Kate that we did not know of before that she could actually pull because everything with her was due to touch right now. It's with her bringing them into her mind, which is a different aspect of her power, which we never knew before. We haven't seen it before, but now we're encountering this at this. Well, the thing is, is it really her power or was it a result of, because I think she felt she fell into a ve- almost a vegetative state and she took everybody with them. Mm. So maybe that's the result of that. But I don't think it's I don't know if it's a power to do that. I mean, that that would be very interesting if they on the second season, if they go into that further, because I, why did this happen? Which is something that's never happened before. We're like, Correct. you know, she right. So if it is part of her power, let me tell you that that is scary that she could do that, that she could just enter other people's um, minds and kind of retrieve those uh, those thoughts. Yeah, I feel the same way, but I, I think this is like a more of an eye opening of more of her power that we didn't get before. And we do get that later on in another mm-hmm. like two episodes. We see more out of Marie. We see more out of Jordan. We see more out of Andre. That we never got to see before, too. And it's like, oh, these kids have more to their power than that they're still learning about, especially with Marie. Yeah. And there's a link to Shetty that that we're, we're, we'll talk about later on when we get to uh, episode seven and eight. But later on, uh, when we come back next episode. Uh, but the. The, the a lot of the memories that we do get out of this particular episode is like with Andre with him fooling around with Kate while Luke was still alive. He was still cheating on Luke at that time. And uh, Jordan with their memory with Brink at a time when Luke went all crazy from all the treatments 
that yeah. Brink was doing to him. And she comes in or they come into the room or the office and they have to take out Luke for a little bit bonk, and knock him out a little. Uh, Brink didn't want to give Jordan the treatment that makes uh, a you out know, like that, that Luke was getting from Sam. Cause right. if you think about enhancing Sam stuff onto Jordan, that would make her 10 or them 10 times more powerful than Sam is already. Correct. Or even Luke was. Yeah. Uh, but Brink winds up convincing Jordan to be their TA. And then we get Marie with her sister and her sister's feelings about Marie and what had happened with their parents from Marie. And she didn't want to have anything to do with her. She right. hates her, thinks she's a, a monster. And that's the reason why uh marie still they, is trying to get in touch with her sister because they they have this whole gap between them because she feels that you know you know marie marie's sister feels that marie killed her parents blatantly and then just blames her and this is something that's within marie herself too right that she's well, i mean it's with. a little girl who that's what she sees she just sees yeah. all of a sudden that her you know her sister is just this monster who killed her parents and mm. you know she doesn't see that you know here's a girl that all of a sudden found that she has these powers and was responsible and she's dealing with the repercussions of i killed my own parents how you know how do you deal with that so mm. so it's there's a lot of great like there's a lot of great things here that you could honestly you could sit down for hours and just analyze so many things about all these characters uh, they've done some amazing, amazing character work, I think, oh, yeah. with all of them. And I honestly can't wait for season two when they, uh, you know, when they do the season two. But that, yeah, no, it's it's some amazing stuff. There. And I'm sure there's a lot more hidden secrets that we still don't know about. Oh, definitely. So. I, I'm looking forward to seeing more. Um but uh, well, the one thing that we kind of brushed over, but we talked about was the <laughs> the drive in with Emma and Sam. So before uh, <clears throat> before they come out of there and they wake up out of their sleep uh, during that time, Emma decides to have sex with Sam at the drive in and yeah. they smell like uh, sweaty popcorn, apparently. And yeah. And on top of that, uh, Emma goes uh, after sex with Sam saying, I think I saw God 14 times. <laughs> <laughs> so that kid must be talented. But he and then Sam just goes into this whole thing going, I don't think he could do it 24 seven. I might be able to do at least 23 seven. I know I, when I heard that, I was like, oh, to be that young. young. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I think you and I both <laughs> thought that at the same time when we watched that going. I wish I could be that young again. Oh my god! No, I thought it, it was. Uh, it was. Uh, it was Sam's first time too. So was it? Oh, it was Sam's first time, yeah. but not Emma's. Not Emma. So Emma asked him, "Was like you never had sex?" And he's like, "No, unless you count my hand," um, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought it was funny. So it was his first, and during sex this is when she when he sees her as a muppet yes and it makes that also funny because i think this is also another way of uh kind of avoiding certain uh um things Female you gotta film nudity and yeah. sexuality on like soft core porn i mean that would listen, be I mean, yeah listen this show still goes pretty far on stuff but it does it um I think it's it, it's still all about Sam's psyche and what he sees. Correct. And how he sometimes sees the world, which is a uh, really which we do get in the next two episodes, uh, because yeah. he does see the real world for what it is and enjoys it for a moment. Yeah. And and, and it's so well, remember, nice he's never see. he he basically was abducted and just didn't know as a child. Yeah. Up, and now he's he's a teenager that's. Well, you know, I hate saying it full of sperm and and power. Young, oh uh, no, yeah, yeah, young. Uh, what is it? Young, young, dumb, young, dumb, and full of cum. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> but so. uh, yeah, and he, he it's like a little kid learning like I could do this. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but uh, yeah, apparently she's pleased. She he, he pleased her. She's pleased and she pleases him in a sense that it's something that he he trusts her. He confides in her. Yeah. And she is honestly his conscience. So if you think about for the rest of the, uh, the season, she from- tries, she tries to be, I mean, if, yeah, and, I mean, we'll talk about the other two episodes, of course, in the next step ep- and the next episode, but yeah, she tries to be, he kind of, you know, once he opens his eyes to the world, he, I don't think he knows how to handle that too. Yeah. You know, it, he, it's all he it's sees too, things black and white if you think about it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing I didn't mention was so in episode five, one of the scenes that I liked. Yeah. Since we're talking about the sexual scenes in the beginning of that episode, mm-hmm. there are these two people having sex where they, you know, they open the door and you oh, see a girl. She's got like a hole in her back or something. Hole in her back. I think it then all of a sudden she climaxes and they had to close the door quick because she and just then all something of, yeah she spews a whole bunch of jizz on the uh on yeah the what door. was that about i think that was i think she has like her her part of her vagina on her back or something i guess i don't <laughs> know i i was confused as hell with that i'm like okay i saw that and when i saw the splatter i was like oh these guys just don't no they just don't hold back they don't well yeah apparently they don't hold back they left it all over the walls the ceiling <laughs> can you imagine be, can you imagine being the prop master and and direct How do I make the, this and mix this stuff up so producer, we can splat it the producer comes to you and says okay so this is the scene i have <laughs> and this is what i need so i need for you to have something that can splatter something that looks like white white jizz (laughs) and you're like excuse me (laughs) and here you are in the uh in the prop department with your crew going so we need to come up with an air gun or something that can take that's actually easier said than done it's the cleanup that's the problem think about that like well, because if you think about it, I mean, so I, I forgot. That I know there's a there's a material that's actually sold to the film industry where it's this sticky substance. And you see it a lot in like horror films when uh, yes. you see like somebody like all of a sudden steps on something and it just starts to look like, like, yeah, like just kind of like a sticky thing that just with stringy things. And somebody was telling me that he worked with that in one, in a set. And he goes, yeah, that's this thing that they came up with because, because it looks that way. It's used so much in movies. Okay. And so I'm wondering if that's the thing they use, except they, I'm sure they mixed it with something that, you know, probably with um, uh, something to give it more of a white looking substance or, or text or, you know, texture. Color. But yeah. cleaning it up, I can't imagine because uh, I'm sure everybody knows, okay, this is just like this goo <laughs> that we got in this thing. <laughs> but when you see it in the camera, you just go and it just splats. You're like, oh, <laughs> you know, so it's, I, it's, it's yeah. a very well done scene, but I just feel it, bad for the 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 person on on set that has to clean it up. And they are reduced as the jizz mopper. The j- <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I'm going back to a clerk's reference back in the day. Everybody, when Randall goes, how much do you think jizz moppers make? <laughs> <laughs> and it's back in the day when they used to have those uh, those porn like like sections where you go and you pay a quarter or a dollar and it just comes right. up and it, people. Was that something in j- in a in clerks. a in a in, was it in clerks it was in clerks randall uh, talks about it <laughs> randall grace himself <laughs> <laughs> but i feel bad for the guy on set going great i'm reduced to a jizz mopper 
Now yep. I know how Randall Graves, what Randall Graves was talking about. So what does the average jizz mopper make? <laughs> I don't know, man, but it's probably not enough. Nowadays, there's uh, no such thing like that because everybody's got their own iPad, their own. T- like they, they don't necessarily have to go to those places. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, they can make their own movies and clean up their own shit. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And have their own donkey shows if they want to. Uh, oh, but- my God. <laughs> Jeez, we've gone so off the rails. Well, that was Clerks too. Sorry. <laughs> oh man, I owe Kevin Smith five dollars now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we we get the whole thing with Emma and him, and uh, they they've had sex, but we find Kate and Marie, Jordan, and Andre wake up. They convince her and they wake up at that point. Uh, We look at Kate's eyes. Kate's eyes are bloody. They're bloody with her blue eyes. You could see the blue because her eyes are completely dilated and you can see they're all bright blue with blood red around it with blood coming out. So it has something to do with like the uh, either lack of drugs or the drugs that she's been given by Shetty herself. And then uh, when Emma and Sam come in, Sam just goes after Kate right away, choking her, ready to kill her because she was involved with what was going on in the woods. Correct. And they don't know this. And, and it's Emma who has to talk Sam down at that point. Which is interesting too. So they they kind of get to that point where they they literally calm Sam down to a point where he just puts her down, and then they we find out all this information about that. Yeah, Kate was utilized by Shetty. She was drugged. Her her powers were utilized to in entrance or in uh, probably in entrap these kids to go right. into the woods and. Uh, even just to control Sam and Luke at certain points, which we've already seen within the flashback with Jordan when Brink was almost killed by Luke at that point, And then she became TA or they became TA, but it, it, it just forced them to show realizations all within each other, their true selves and what had happened. So I think they, came together a little bit more within this episode because of the honesty and everything. Right. But I, you know, come next episode. Oh, it it could be all reservoir dogs after that. (laughs) But in a way it does, I think (laughs) Uh, a cool thing that I liked about within this episode, uh, a song that I truly loved that came from less than zero, a movie called less than zero that had, James Spader, Robert Downey Jr., and a whole slew of some of the old Gen Xer or a, uh, what would we call them? The Brat Pack mm-hmm. at that time. Jamie Gertz was in it. Uh, it's called Hazy Shade of Winter, originally recorded by the Bangles. But in this case, uh, this is a cover by Beautiful Disaster. So, okay. And uh, I just like that. And I always like just to bring up the idea of the Spotify playlists that are out there for shows like this. There is a uh, Gen V Spotify playlist out there, too. Oh, I'm sure there is. And uh, this is on there, as well as the other song that was in there. It was during the time when Sam and Emma were having sex. And it was called Don't Delete the Kisses by Wolf Alice. So uh, just to bring that up. So if you're interested in those songs, you could go search that or look for the Gen V Spotify playlist. Uh, I have a couple of quotes, but I, I you already gave out the one big huge one from. Soldier I gave out my quote. The only quote that I uh, that I that I could remember, or at least that was memorable to me, I gave that quote out. So <laughs> yeah, the one that I get from Soldier Boy, which is funny, goes knock knock knock. Who's there? Go fuck your face. <laughs> Basically, because <laughs> them asking all the questions. <laughs> right. I already gave the other one about uh, with from Emma after having sex with Sam. And then, uh, of course, in the very beginning of the episode, uh, 
before Emma storms out to go find Sam and uh, because of uh, Kate, she just looks at Kate and goes, also, you're a cunt. <laughs> so I'm like, OK, we got Billy Butcher Jr. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> he loves those words. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, uh, that was our coverage. Uh, we will be continuing our coverage next episode on Panels to Pixels podcast uh, on Gen V uh, next week. So keep in mind, we'll be we're putting that out. So I'll put out a teaser if you guys want to send any feedback. But uh, for now, if you want to send any feedback, well, literally all you have to do is go to our Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash Panels to Pixels. Uh, if you don't feel like you want to look at that and put a comment in the image down below when I do put these out or an image of like the previous episode, because honestly, I'll answer anything or read anything that you put in comments. We haven't really been getting much, but people liking everything, which is pretty awesome. Damn it. Uh, send some feedback. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> not really. Yeah, it's like I honestly I listen to a lot of my friends and I don't send feedback at times and I get really upset that I don't No, I, I want I else. want feedback. I oh, want okay. feedback. I'm a person that needs feedback. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I I live on the feedback and you know no I'm just kidding but yeah, you know, just yeah, send it feedback. <laughs> yeah, yeah, facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. Uh you could email us at uh, in its panels two pixels one at gmail.com. So that's panels to spell to pixels and the number one at gmail.com you could just write out a regular texted email and we'll read it if you want you could easily record yourself with these cool nifty devices that we have called cell phones ipads computers now because everybody has zoom and everything else you could just record yourself send it as an attachment we'll play it so you could be part of the podcast uh we'd love to hear your voice and your thoughts so please do so uh, we uh, not only do I put everything out on Facebook, but I also do it on Instagram. So all you have to do is at panels to pixels podcast, just find us there, subscribe or follow us and then send in the comment below. Obviously, if this episode is out, just put it in the comment below and we'll read it. Uh, we could be found on Spotify, Google play, Apple podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice. If there is a rating or review, please do so five stars is always appreciated please be honest uh and always refer a friend as well too because uh the best thing is verbal referrals to any friends that you have like i always say water cooler talks uh yeah and uh apple Podcasts is the most preferred player of choice and that's why people get listened to a lot too so please i know a lot of you people have iphones so <laughs> use them and do us proud and uh send that out if you can um but uh other than that here's an part of podcast where where can listeners hear you so rob where can listeners hear you you can listen to me on fantasy picks movie edition where we cover failed movies that failed at the box office or with critics and we have the audacity to become <laughs> armchair uh, exe film executives and make it better. Um, yeah, so that's where you go listen to us. Usually Mark is a part of this. We also have some of the other guys that also come on. Yep. And we do have different segments. Uh, we also do our top five movie draft. And we also now do our, uh, we're doing a, um, we cover a film composer uh, and their works uh and also one of our segments so yeah come check us out awesome uh not only can you hear me here on panels the pixels podcast rob already mentioned it i do occasionally jump on to fantasy picks movie edition uh you could also hear me on adrenaline cinema podcast as well where we cover everything action adventure fantasy suspense thriller anything that gets your adrenaline going so uh most recently, you'll have Total Recall that is out there. I'm working on Friday the 13th Final Chapter and possibly a, a couple other episodes that I have in the works. Uh, if you do have a suggestion, all you have to do is send those to, you know, at Adrenaline Cinema Podcast at gmail.com. And that's it. Uh, or you can go to our Facebook group, which is facebook.com forward slash Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. 
or Instagram at Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. Uh, subscribe, check, do all the cool stuff. We also have a YouTube, just like here on Panels to Pixels, and I didn't mention that too. So if you go to uh, YouTube and look, search for Panels to Pixels Podcast, we are there. So you can check that out. It's literally the same podcast there, but we have other content from interviews that I've done with Comic Book Men, Kevin Smith, my friend Pat Patty Tallman. Uh, <clears throat> there's a couple others too. I'm working on trying to get more. I uh, last episode when we did Invincible, Jamie actually yelled at me to get in touch with Ross Marquand, who we all know, who is the voice of the Red Skull. It also does voices in the TV show on Amazon Prime called Invincible, which we're covering and continue to cover. So uh, you could hear me there on Adrenaline Cinema podcast. But here on Panels to Pixels, we're going to continue our coverage with uh, Gen V. We're going to do the final two episodes, which is seven and eight. Uh, Loki season two has completed. So Steve and I did that. Look forward to our coverage of the Marvels and our review on that and how we feel about that. Rob has his own views, too. <laughs> <laughs> I have yet to see it, oh, so I have to I make my own assumptions and make my own notes. But uh, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> so uh, keep a lookout for that. Uh, you should be able to be hearing me soon on Wilhelm, as well as Podcastka, which is a joint venture there. Where I'm not sure what, exactly what Ben is calling it or what it's going to be called on Podcastica, but it, it's going to be about Monarch. So I'll just call it the Monarch cast. So that is Monarch that is going to be found on Apple TV Plus within another week. So you guys could uh, watch that show and send in feedback there. Uh, Wilhelm, and I, I believe it's at Wilhelm and Instagram as well as Facebook. Uh, dot com forward slash Wilhelm. So check that out. Or you could go to podcastica.com. Uh, and also keep on the lookout. You guys know that I did Sandman cast. So uh, keep on uh, out on the lookout. That's coming out within the next year early on, apparently. So uh, my friend Jamie Dimmick and I will be covering that as well. So uh, a lot of things to look forward to. Uh, I highly recommend Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, so please check that out. I will be posting the links in the podcast notes as well as on YouTube. So please click away and uh, subscribe and like and follow us there, too, because we have some great episodes from Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. Cool. So uh, with that, that was our episode. I'm Mark. And I am Rob. <laughs> different <laughs> panel different pixel same podcast we'll see you on the next panel good night everybody good night <laughs>